So, good afternoon, grade 11, Humanities and Social Sciences. So, for the creative nonfiction, the literacy essay, lesson number 3. So, nasa lesson number 3 na po tayo, ha? Uh, principles, elements, techniques, and devices of creative nonfiction. So, ito yung pinaka uh, topic or pinaka title ng mga sumusunod pang uh, topics po. Kung mga sub subtopic lang po sila. So, using element of creative nonfiction. So, like what I've said uh, before, uh, we already discussed the definition or the meaning of the elements of the story. But, um, here in lesson number 3 is, uh, of course, nadagdagan siya and iisa-isahin ulit natin siya. Okay po? So, activity, remembering us, so close your eyes, recall your life five years ago. So, what are the struggles you had surpassed? What did you do to overcome your struggles? Who were these people who uh, trade or made a mark in your life? And then share it to your classmate or buddy and let them ask you two questions from the story you've shared. So, Ano ba yung mga kinaharap niyong um, struggles or challenges five years ago? And then, paano nyo in-overcome yun? Or anong nangyari? What will happen? And sino yung mga taong kasama nyo during those times? So, uh, iisa-isahin natin yan. So, kayo, isushare nyo. Isushare nyo po yan. Okay? So, we have this letter A, Elements of Fiction. So, when we say fiction... Ito po ay mga katang isip or yung mga uh, we are using our imagination. So, uh, fiction po yon ha? So, tatandaan nyo po. So, in fiction, there are six main elements of fiction article. So, these elements serve as the backbone of every story. So, first is we have these characters. Yan. So, these mainly involves the voices of those who are primarily concerned in the story. So, sino yung mga, uh, mga involved dun sa story na yun? So, we call it uh, as characters. So, characters are the light of every action and scenes of a story. Of course, sila yung gumaganap, sila yung nagpo-portray, sila yung nag act it is necessary to understand that characters are representations of man for their for they portray feelings, behaviors, experiences, and aspirations. So lahat yan ay ginagampanan ng mga characters, ba? So doon natin nalalama what kind of attitude yung meron sila, uh, anong feelings, behaviors, so anong characters nila, so kung sino ba sila. So, lahat po yun ay nakapaloob sa characters. And then, we have the four types of characters. So, for example, number one is the protagonist. So, definition, hero. Yan. Example, si Ricardo Dalisay. And I'm sure alam niyo yung palabas na probinsyano. And then, si Edward Cullen, yung Twilight. So, protagonist, uh, siya yung pinaka- Bida or main character. So, pwedeng hero siya. Kagaya nga ng mga examples natin dito. Si Cardo at si Edward Cullen ng Twilight. So, tandaan niyo po yan na uh, sa characters po, meron tayo iba't, iba't iba na po pwede natin uh, para dun yung character na yun. Second po is the antagonist. So, the opposite of hero. So, for example, ang mga kontrabida, ayan. So, halimbawa, si Homer, si Alakdan. So, ang gumanap nito ay si, si John Hilario. And uh, siya yung nag-portray as Alakdan sa probinsyano. And then, the next is the fox. Of course, the little red riding hood. Uh, mga kontrabida sila. So, opposite sila ng pagiging isang hero. Okay? So, third is the dynamic. 
a changing character from evil to goodness or vice versa. So, pwedeng goodness naging evil, evil naging goodness. So, for example, si Romulo, ayan, ako, puro tayo uh, example ng probinsyano dito. So, si Romulo or si Pinuno, uh, sa probinsyano din to, ha? for example, si, ang, ang alam kong gumanap nito ay si, si Senator, ano, si Senator siya. Si Lito Lapid, yan. Siya yung gumanap. So, masama siya nung una. Masama yung naging, uh, masama yung character niya in the first place. Pero, naging good naman na siya. Okay? And then, si Bruce ng Shark Finding Nemo. So, yun po yung tinatawag na dynamic. Kaya, wag kayong malilito ha. And then, the fourth po is the static or yung flop. Non-changing character. So, sila pa rin. Ganun pa din sila. Walang pagbabago. So, si Lola Flora ng probinsya, no? So, uh, kung paano siya nung una, still the same hanggang ngayon, ganun pa din yung pinoportray niya, di ba? Isa, isa pa din siyang mabait na Lola na mapagkalinga, maalaga, maasikaso sa kanyang apo na si Carla Dalisay. So, Ang tawag po doon is static because non-changing character, hindi nagbabago, hindi nagpapalit ng pag-uugali or ng kung ano man. And then si Dory, the find, uh, in Finding Nemo. So, I hope you really understand the four types of characters kasi uh, hindi lang tayo basta-basta gagawa ng or lilikha ng mga... Uh, mga character na po pwede natin ilagay sa ating storya. So, ibibilang natin sila sa kung anong type nila. Kung protagonist ba, antagonist, dynamic, or static or flat. So, napakadali niyan at madaling intindihin. Secondly is the characterization. This gives the reader details about the characters involved, which include physical appearance, way of thinking, Feeling, actions, and reactions to events. So, some examples is, Tony is the shy type. Ibig sabihin, Tony is the character, but uh, the shy type is the characterization, which is, yun yung, or nagde-describe siya kung anong klaseng uh, tao si Tony. So, yun yung tinatawag natin karak uh, characterization. Okay po ba? Uh, second example is Ben has a Hispanic appearance. So, si Ben, of course, the character, kung ano mang story, ah. So, Hispanic appearance, so characterization. So, yun siya. And then, Coco is the handsome one. So, Coco is the character. And then, when we say characterization, the handsome one. Okay? So, sobrang andaling itindihan, di ba? So, I hope you really, really understand. Third is the setting. So, the situations, actions, and circumstances of a story that has transpired in a certain time and place. It is basic element that provides the total environment of the story in consideration of the time and space for the movements and actions of the character. Of course, setting, when, and where. So, kailan naganap yung actions, uh, ano yung mga possible na places na pinangyarihan nung, nung iyong kwento. So, that's the setting. That's the meaning or that's the essence of setting. Okay? So, some literary texts do not need to convey the place just to have the reader's awareness towards the setting. So, some settings will be in a descriptive way. So, uh, may mga stories na hindi literal na binabanggit yung um, place mismo. Halimbawa, Luneta Park, nabanggit sa story. Of course, the setting would be Luneta Park in Luneta Park. Pero, um, may mga stories na even though they don't uh, they don't mention the exact place, they describe na Manila. For example, summer. Kate shouted while looking at the endless salty water with a cold breeze blowing through her hair. She always loved this, the sand on her feet, and the sound of the waves. It could calm any man who is anger. Kate is happy. Kate is satisfied. So what do you think is the setting dun sa particular na binasa ko. So, describe niya, di ba? May waves, 
may sand. So what do you think is the uh, is the setting of that uh, passage po? So of course it would be beach, di ba? Uh, beach. Uh, kasi uh, din describe na merong waves and then summer uh, may buhangin so nililipad-lipad yung buhok ni Kate so that is why uh, and that is one example of getting the setting of the story hindi man siya literal na naka naka uh, sulat or nakasabi kundi nagdescribe naman siya so automatic alam manalaman natin yung setting niya okay Number four, point of view. It is the angle of considering things, the perspective of the writer in narrating the story. It answers the questions, who is narrating the story? So, meron tayo din tawag na first person point of view, second person point of view, and then the third person point of view. So, when we say first person, so, the story is told by the protagonist or one of the characters who interacts closely with the protagonist. So, it uses the pronouns I, me, and we. So, first person po ang tawag doon. Okay? Pag naman second, po, uh, second person point of view, you, yours, and yours. So, siya na yung tinutukoy natin. At first, sarili natin. Second is yung taong kausap. And then for the third person, the narrator is not part of the story but describes the events that happen. It uses the pronouns he, she, him, and her. So you are pointing to someone else. Okay, that is the third person point of view. So merong ganon. Merong ganon sa story, di ba? Next po is the plot. So, plot, it is the structure of the story, the planned flow or series of events from beginning, middle, and end of the story. So, remember, three tags pyramid. So, structure of the story. So, yung flow niya, uh, menong series of events. So, sunod-sunod siya. So, po pwede kang mag, uh, summarize through, through the use of plot. Uh, menong beginning, menong middle, and menong end. So, uh, because of that, we determine what is the story all about. Okay? Number six, symbols. Writers may include images that bear certain meanings that go beyond the literal. Certain symbols that may convey both positive and negative connotations depending on how they are used, presented, and perceived. So, we actually use this uh, kind of symbols uh, to determine what is the story all about. So, we can use, uh, let's say, the, the story is about love. So, what do you think is the symbols for the love? So, it can be um, a family or a heart shape. So, that's the symbol, okay? So, yun yung tindang the symbols. Yan. Some examples of symbols. So, pwede natin gamitin crucifix. So, anong meaning niya? Suffering, death, or salvation. Black cat. So, pag nakakita tayo nito, isipin natin bad luck. Gold, of course, wealth, kayamanan. Spring, new life, the peace, red blood, broken mirrors. So, pag nabasag yung salamin, ah, uh, Kung iyon ang simbolo or symbols ng isang story, broken mirror, it means uh, separation. So, yun yung kadalasan. Okay? And then number seven is the theme. Theme can be statement of generaliz generalization about life. The highlights noteworthy realizations concerning the nature and complexities, complexities of human life cultivated from the experience, actions, and decisions. So, some examples of theme, alienation, the effect of the loneliness, coming of age, loss of innocence, death, consequences, good versus evil, survival of one despite the triumph, love can overcome all obstacles, survival, man versus nature, courage, conquering with. 
And for the letter B, we have these uh, figures of speech. So, familiar naman to sa inyo si English, and I'm sure alam niyo naman to. So, figures of speech constitute a rhetorical or literary device that departs from the literal meaning of an idea. They may be employed to make the idea more colorful. So, determine natin siya. So, we have these different figures of speech. So, para malaman natin kung anong klase siya. Okay, first is the simile. When we say simile, comparison of ideas using like or as. So, in the sentence, you will uh, looking for the word like or as. So, if you are uh, looking at it in the one sentence, of course, that is, uh, that is an example of simile. So, for example, you are like a kitten lost in a city. So, because of the word like, uh, the example is about simile. Okay, so comparing you to a kitten with use of like. Okay, so that is simile. Number two is the metaphor. Comparing two things without the use of like or as. So, uh, pinagko-compare naman sila pero hindi nagagamit ng like or as. For example, you're the apple of my eye. So, uh, kinumpara mo siya at sa isang apple. So, comparing you to an apple. So, example niya, that is an example of metaphor. So, napakadali, di ba? So, madali siyang um, intindihin kasi may mga clues siya. Third, personification. Using human attributes in describing non-human or inanimate objects. So, for example, the moon smiled at the star so using human okay attributes kumbaga uh, you are describing to a non-human so the moon smiled at the star so uh, personification po ang tawag doon okay may human attributes from the word smile diba smile the moon do not have to face a smile fourth parallelism Use of the same grammatical structure. For example, peace can only be achieved through dedication. Peace can only be achieved through diligence. Peace can only be achieved through fidelity of the rule of law. So, the use of peace can only be achieved in one sentence. So, parallelism. Uh, same grammatical. So, parehas lang ng structure. So, ang tawag doon is parallelism. Okay? So, paulit-ulit siya, di ba? Peace can only be achieved. So, meron ulit, peace can only be achieved. So, para realism po ang tawag doon. Okay? Next, number five, apostrophe. Addressing a person who is either dead or absent when the utterance is made. For example, mabini modip. Bonifacio Rizal, let your guiding spirits influence our leaders in this time of great crisis. So, calling Mabini, Bonifacio, and Rizal who are dead to guide them. So, apostrophe. Um, yun po. So, uh, who are dead to guide them. So, ang tawag dun is apostrophe. Basta may apostrophe. Automatic apostrophe na yun. Okay? And, number six, metonymy. Substitution of a word or a phrase for an idea to which it is closely related. So, let me give you a hand. So, hand refers to help. So, substitution or uh, closely or pareha sila. So, let me give you a hand. So, ibig sabihin, yung hand niya, is referring to a health. So, metonymy naman po ang tawag doon. Okay? Next. Number seven. Allusion. Allusion is a comparison that involves making refer references to a famous fictional or historical figure, event, or idea. So, for example, he was a real Romeo with a lady. So, Romeo, a character in Romeo and Juliet of Shakespeare play, Romeo is a true romantic hero. So, allusion, comparison, um, 
uh, you are comparing Romeo, na papedi rin sa Romeo and Juliet. So, merong comparison. So, if you are going to write your uh, your own story, so pwede naman po yun. So, ang tawag doon is allusion. Okay? So, number eight is onomatopoeia, word that imitates a real sound. So, may sounds. Rika turned when she heard a loud splash. So, splash is a sound of water. So, ang tawag doon is onomatopoeia. So, merong real sound. Hindi man siya uh, literal na sinabi, kundi yung word na splash is an example of onomatopoeia. Okay? Yan. So, last two. Number nine is hyperbole. Use of exaggeration to emphasize an idea. So, for example, her smile was a miles wide. So, she is very happy. So, ibig sabihin ng sentence is she is very happy. So, exaggeration. May pagka... Uh, yun nga, exage. Paano ba natin i-determine yun? So, her smile was a miles wide. Miles wide. So, masaya or malawak, malaki. So, it means she is very happy. And that is an example of hyperbole. Number 10, sinek dok. The part or the part to represent the whole. So, for example, do you have wheels? So, wheels is referring to a vehicle. So, yun lang naman siya. So, napakadali nung... Uh, and uh, some po uh, the figures of speech so i hope you understand or understand the definition or the difference between the between them okay so letter c ganun tayong a b and c and for the letter c irony so irony happens when there's a marked contrast between what is said and what is meant or between appearance and reality. So this can be a difference between the surface meaning of something that is said in the underlying meaning. It can also be a difference between what might be anticipated to happen and what actually occurs. So um, uh, contrast, ha? always remember that the irony is contrast uh, sa sinabi, sa ibig sabihin, so sa realidad, at sa nakikita natin. So, contrast, contrast sila. So, magkakaiba sila. Okay? So, we have these three types of irony. Ano, ano kaya yon? So, first is the verbal irony. Takes place when the speaker says something in sharp contrast to his or her actual meaning. So, the speaker regularly makes a statement that seems very direct, yet indicates that the opposite is in fact fact true or what the speaker really means for example well isn't it this nice authored by a man whose plane is going down so from the song ironic of alanis morrison so um uh, speaker says ibig sabihin siya mismo yung salita, and then uh, well isn't it this nice so uh, opposite is in fact or true so, ganun lang naman siya. So, no. Verbal irony can also consist of ironic similes, which are comparisons in which the two things are not alike at all. So, your hand is soft as sandpaper. Means your hand is rough. Okay? So, you are warm as ice. Means you are cold. So, uh, mabulaklak at malalim na meaning. Pero, we can um, identify those words by okay for being a deeply understanding so secondly is dr dramatic irony it happens when the audience has more information than one or more characters in a work of literature so shakespeare's othello othello's be best friend lago is evil and attempting to bring othello down so desdemona has been faithful to the othello doesn't know this so the audience is aware but othello is not aware so dramatic so magkaiba sila ng perception so, medyo dramatic sila. Pero they are contrasts, diba? Uh, like what uh, first said, evil and attempting. Then the second one is being faithful. 
Number three, situational irony. Yeah, situational irony contains of a situational in which the outcome is very different from what was expected. So there are contradictions and contrasts present in situational irony. For example, the movie The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, the citizens of the Emerald City assume that Oz is a great and powerful, yet the man behind the curtain is revealed to be an old man with no special powers. So, uh, situation na, magkaiba sila ng ine-expect. So, contradict. So, hindi sila, contra sila. Okay? Sa pagpa-present ng situation na. So, magkaiba sila. So, situational irony. Letter D. Nahaba pa ba? Ayan, last na. So, letter D is the scene and dialogue. Scene becomes more interesting and animated with the use of dialogue which refer to the verbal exchange between the characters. So, when adding dialogue, one should imagine the characters themselves speaking to each other to make the dialogue as realistic as it should be. So, scene and dialogue. Okay, to. Uh, uh, halimbawa, sa anime, so, ikaw yung magda-dialogue. So, even though that it is a dialogue, it should have, of course, as realistic na the way na ikaw mismo yung nagpo-portray at nagsasalita. So, yun lang naman siya. And, uh, I'm, I'm sure, mas naging klaro ko sa inyo, mas naintindihan nyo. And then, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask or chat me para ma-address natin siya. Okay, so at the at the end of the discussion, of course, we will be having an activity. Okay, so a direction, identify what figure of speech does it exemplify. So, anong uh, figures of speech yung mga sumusunod. And then we have this activity again. Identify the following examples as situational irony, dramatic irony, or verbal irony. So, meron naman choices. So, hindi naman kayo mahihirapan. All you have to do is to simplify or uh, read uh, many times para mas, mas maintindihan nyo yung meaning niya. And then we have this activity again, match an event from the first column with an event from the second column to create an irony. So, make choices or let. So, you don't have to worry. And then last... Write why in the blank if the statement has, has, or having an irony, and then end if not. So, ayan. So, napakadali lang. So, that's it. Uh, and that's all for today. So, thank you for listening, and I hope you really, really listen at tapusin itong ating discussion. So, good luck, and God bless you always.